so we're going to move on to um, our session two, which deals with live education in the post COVID era. Um, and I think we're all optimistic and looking forward to a time where we can actually um, promote live education as well as a lot of the things that we've heard about earlier this morning in teleeducation. So our first speaker is going to be uh, Laura Padilla from Virginia Commonwealth University, and she'll be talking about a hands-on image verification workshop for medical and physics residents, a multi-institutional update. Hey, I hope you can all hear me. Perfect. Um, thank you for the introduction. Today I'm going to talk to you about the multi-institutional update to the image verification workshop that we presented last year. So just some quick background. The reason why we decided to create this training is because besides the importance of image verification in modern radiotherapy, there is often limited to no formal education for residents on this topic. So we decided to create a training and we based it on the four I's by Jenny Bella. So these are inductive, input, implementation, and integration. For the inductive portion, this is where you really want to get the people who are participating thinking about the information that they already know about the subject. So we gave them a survey. For the input, this is where you want them to look at all of the new information and really try to learn it. And we did this through a very active um, lecture. For the implementation task, uh, we really wanted them to think about all of the information that we had just given them, and we wanted them to apply it. So in order to do that, what we did is we unlocked patient images on ARIA, and we grouped them in groups that had physicians and physicists together, and we had them practice and discuss what it is that they would um, prioritize during the image registration. And then for integration, this is where you want them thinking about how they're going to use this information moving forward. And we did this through a survey. We presented the um, results for the VCU residents last year. And this year, we got to present the results with six other institutions, which is really exciting. Um, this is when the workshops were given. So as you can see, they were given throughout the academic year. The Workshops that were given the earliest in the academic year were given in mid-September and late October. These only had a very small number of PGY2 residents in them, so we don't expect these to bias our results in any way. So we had a total of 50 participants. Um, we actually had over 50 participants go through the workshop, but we have a full set of pre and post surveys for 50 participants. 38 of them were radiation oncology residents and 12 of them were medical physics residents. So one of the questions that we asked them in the pre and the post survey was, how comfortable are you with assessing the appropriateness of imaging orders and with independently checking films? And these are the results that we got. So looking at the group as a whole, the average comfort level was a 5.5 out of 10 on um, assessing the appropriateness of imaging orders. For checking films, the average comfort level before the workshop was 5.1 out of 10. Uh, both of these numbers went up to a 7.1 and 6.8 respectively after the training, and both of these differences are statistically significant. Looking at the breakout, so radiation oncology residents by themselves and medical physics residents by themselves, um, you can see that the baseline numbers for medical physics residents are slightly um, higher at the beginning, but despite that, the increase after the training is still statistically significant for both. So I'm going to spend some time really talking about the um, radiation oncology residents results a little bit more, just because they're really interesting. So the graph that I'm showing here, for the bubbles, the size of the bubble is proportional to the number of people that selected that one number. So for example, we have the pre and the post graphs, and here for the PGY2 results, you have one resident that um, reported a comfort level of one out of 10, versus four residents reporting a comfort level of three out of 10, and that's why that bubble is bigger. So a couple of things that stand out right away is the fact that the gradient, the difference between years, is a lot steeper in the pre-workshop results versus the post-workshop. 
Also, you can see that the average value for the results is much lower on the pre versus the post. And we can even see that there's one PGY5 resident that reported a two out of 10 in um, their comfort with assessing the, the imaging orders. And after the workshop, the lowest score that we got was a seven for a PGY5. For checking films, it's very much a similar story. So you see the gradient being a lot steeper. You see the ranges being much wider pre-workshop than post. And you see the average values being a lot lower before the training than after. Again, we have one PGY5 that reported a confidence of, a confidence of two out of 10 checking films. And the lowest score that we got after the training was a six out of 10. So another thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to get a, a, just an idea of what the extent of their current training was um, for image verification. And so we asked them and we found out that 44% of them reported having none to minimal training in this subject. And this includes two PGY-5 and they're not both from the same institution. So we asked them to explain, and this is a representative quote out of that group. So you can see that when they do get training, oftentimes it's just shadowing. So they're not actually doing the task themselves. We also wanted to know what they perceived to be a barrier for them learning these skills. And we analyzed all of the different answers that we got and we grouped them by themes. And you can see that a lot of them reported time constraints to be one of the concerns, again, because attendings have to do these tasks pretty quickly. Uh, the other limitation that they, that they reported to them learning image verification was just simply lack of exposure and hands-on practice. So aside from the fact that when they do see it, it's just by shadowing and not actually doing it themselves, they also report that there's times where they don't even get to see it because the attending does this off-site remotely. And one of the quotes that really stood out is someone just reported that really they just need someone teaching these skills. So the outcomes of the workshop showed that 98% of participants actually reported improved confidence, knowledge, and or skills. And 50% of them said that they would like more examples for practice, which is why we're working on developing the image verification platform. And you can hear more about it on our asynchronous talk. And we also wanted to ask them how they felt about the, the interprofessional aspect. So we had medical physics residents with um, physician residents. So we really wanted to know how they felt about that. And <laughs> this is my most favorite quote that we got. Um, so aside from physicists being interesting folks, it seems like the social experiment was successful. 94% found IP to be helpful. Um, they like seeing one another's perspective and they like collaborating with someone that had different expertise. And so we would like to thank everybody who made this possible at all the different institutions. We really very much appreciate people giving our workshops and we appreciate all of the residents who participated. Thank you.